Have you ever wondered how batteries are developed or how metals are tested for corrosion? Well, in this video, we're going to be talking about potentiostats, what they are, and how they're used in science and industry. Now, this is a brief introductory video, so if you'd like to learn more, you can find a link to the Biologic Learning Center below. So what exactly is a potentiostat? Well, it's a scientific instrument and it looks something like this. And it's used in electrochemistry to control and measure voltage and current. So potentiostats are used to study what we call redox reactions, which are electron transfer reactions between substances at the interface of an electrode and an electrolyte. The reducing agent loses electrons and the oxidizing agent gains electrons. Now, as the electrons flow through an external circuit, the current flows in the opposite direction, and this can be in a forward or reverse direction. An example of this is seen in our smartphone batteries, where the current is either forced, like when we're charging them, or spontaneous when we're using them. So now let's look at an electrochemical cell, which usually consists of a three electrode system. This includes the working electrode, which looks something like these, and this is where we study the reaction of interest. Next, the reference electrode. Now this provides a stable reference point against which the working electrode's potential is measured. Now there should be no electrochemical reactions occurring here. And finally, the counter or auxiliary electrode, which closes the circuit and allows the current to flow between it and the working electrode during electrochemical reaction. And these electrodes are then hooked up to leads or cables, which are then connected to the potentiostat. A potentiostat's effectiveness relies on its ability to precisely control and measure the voltage. And any fluctuation is going to result in measurement errors. But to understand how a potentiostat effectively controls the voltage, we need to briefly look at the internal circuitry. Now here is a basic circuit diagram. Now, keep in mind that this setup can vary a little depending on what you're trying to optimize. And that's why at Biologic, we offer two different ranges of potentiostats to cover different needs. Now a potentiostat circuit uses a control amplifier, here labeled CA, to compare the working electrode's voltage with that of the reference electrode. It then adjusts the working electrode's potential via negative feedback until the voltage matches. Now this negative feedback loop ensures that the working electrode maintains a precise voltage relative to the reference electrode. Now these instruments usually have two functional modes, potentiostatic and galvanostatic. In potentiostatic mode, the voltage is applied and controlled, and then the current flowing through the system is measured. Now it is common to apply what we call a voltage ramp, the most popular being cyclic voltammetry. Now in galvanostatic mode, the instrument measures potential variations while applying and controlling the current. The most common application here being battery and battery materials testing, such as repeated charge and discharge cycles. Now both these modes use direct current, and in DC mode, the potentiostat is used to study the time response of an electrochemical system. But nowadays, most potentiostats can also measure the impedance, or the resistance of the system, using a technique called electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. EIS designates a sinusoidal or AC control mode. The potentiostat applies a sinusoidal input signal either current or voltage, at various frequencies, and then measures the dynamic response of the system. 
Now this control mode is widely used in the field of energy, such as batteries and fuel cells, and for corrosion, because it can accurately and rapidly provide a detailed description of the system and the mechanisms of the electrochemical reactions that are taking place. If you'd like to learn more about EIS, you can find a link to the Biologic Learning Center in the description below. Now these instruments provide invaluable insights into a range of electrochemical processes, including analytical electrochemistry, electrocatalysis, and corrosion. And by combining with scanning probe workstations, we can gain an even better understanding of localized electrochemical processes. But perhaps the most recent significant growth in electrochemistry has been in the battery market particularly with lithium-ion batteries powering everything from smartphones to cars. And with the growth of the rechargeable battery market, there's a need for a product that addresses the specific challenges in this field. And that's why we have a battery cycler. Now, battery cyclers share many of the characteristics of potentiostats, but are used to answer two primary needs, to select and test the quality of batteries, and to qualify batteries and determine their capacity. Now, with all these applications, it's no surprise to see a growing interest in potentiostats and in electrochemistry. To learn more about potentiostats, scanning probe workstations, battery cyclers, our learning center can guide you through the basics all the way up to advanced techniques. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.